A new series based on a true story of a real life scandal involving New York's high society. CNN's David Daniel looks at the talked about new limited series debuting this week, Inventing Anna. I might have a story. Her name is Anna Delvey or Anna Sorokin. No one's sure. She's either a rich German heiress or she's flat broke. The charges are insane. Inventing Anna stars Julia Garner as the woman who dazzled New York's social scene, stealing hearts and much more. I am famous. People are painting a public picture of me as some criminal. That's not my story. And what is your story? Anna Klumsky plays a writer trying to put it all together. I knew nothing about it. Um, I, you know, I don't have Instagram. I live under a rock. I did not. I got to come fresh. The most expensive resort in Morocco. I realized the clues were there all along. She put it all on my cards. The amazing story and Shonda Rhimes scripts had the cast entranced. We were having table readings when I was gasping and like, <gasps> like I was, I'm very intense. Like I was, I was really loud <laughs> during the table readings, just being like, ah, oh no. I, so it was, I was going through it. That first table read, the energy in the room was extraordinary. Mm. I mean, we were banging on the desk laughing. We were gasping. It, it was so theatrical, but there also was like this real emotional current. They put me in handcuffs and everything. Can you imagine? Yeah, they do that. I get to ask the questions that many people want to ask. Like, do you actually believe the lies that you are telling? As long as we just say the words while we're shooting it and don't mess it up, like it's all there because it's there on the page. RWA with image, money, power. Everyone is hustling. Real hot girl. Every day men do far worse things than anything I've allegedly done. Anna stole a jet. In Hollywood, I'm David Dan. Every movie in the franchise has opened at number one, and Jackass Forever continued the streak. It topped the chart with $23.5 million. Moonfall launched in second place with $10 million and figured dwarfed by the disaster flicks reported $138 million budget. Spider-Man No Way Home dropped to third, but made another $9.6 million for a domestic total of $749 mil. Scream fell to fourth place on ticket sales of $4.7 million. $4.2 million gave Sing 2 the fifth place spot and a domestic total of $140 million. I didn't know you could say that word on TV. I'm, Don't say it again. I'm say it again. Wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> you wouldn't be the... <laughs> Mother did that more than once. Valentine's Day just a week away and SA Lies. SA Live is getting us ready with gifts and treats and recipes. Mike and Fiona, they would never use language like that. They just, they just eat and enjoy life. It's family. It is one week from Valentine's and we are making Valentine's for veterans. KSAC Community Spotlight with Soldiers Angels. And of course, ahead of Valentine's Day, how about a little pampering for yourself or your sweetheart? We take you to Pro's Nails and show you a pedicure that's just the bomb. And then how about some Valentine's soap? Oh yes, squeaky clean and romantic from Organically Bath and Beauty. And you know what Sunday is the big game and Tony Sachery's game day bacon wrapped drumettes. Ooh, that sounds good. And Mrs. Kitchen Restaurant, soul food here in San Antonio. And the yummy, sweet, tasty treats. Cakes by Felicia is here with some Valentine sweets. And VNA Rodriguez shows us a great concha banana pudding. Yum. Plus, what kind of action? What, what do you need if you're an action hero? We'll answer that question. Two things only. Coming up. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Right now on KSET.com, love is in the air. And anyone, whether single or part of a couple, um, you all can appreciate a good deal. Yeah, from donuts and macaroons to lobster and steak, there are plenty of specials to share with that special someone in your life. Or you could just share it to yourself. We have some deals taking place around San Antonio area restaurants for Valentine's Day. And the days leading up to Valentine's Day, you can take a look at the list on KSAT.com. All right, I'm taking notes. For what? <laughs> Make you, sure I do it right. I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm watching you yeah, this Steph, year. Lobster and said, steak. 
That's lobster and flowers. Yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. Stephanie said like three days of flowers. She wants to extend it. It's the whole thing. There you what? go. I like saying that yeah. earlier on GMSA. I was taking wow. those then too. Okay. Um, breezy today, 60 degrees. We're already at 60 actually, so low 60 is a good bet, obviously. 65 Tuesday, 68 Wednesday, and uh, maybe a small chance for some showers on Saturday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, well, your flowers, lobster, steak, steak, lobster and steak, surf and <laughs> turf, chocolate. Keep going. All you good advice. <laughs> All good ideas. I'm watching you guys. <laughs> and if you need some more ideas, SA Live has them too. And she's watching us right now. SA Live starts right now. <laughs> Today on SA Live, Valentine's for Veterans. It's our KSAT Community Spotlight. Beautiful nails and the full spa treatment for you and your sweetheart. Don't miss the perfect pampering place. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Monday. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. All right, you know, sometimes you feel a little bit like a superhero or maybe an action hero, okay? So if you were an action figure, what would your two accessories be? Mike? Um, well, we had talked about this. Duct tape, Ooh. probably. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and I have a case, you had said, that has, you know, it's kind of like my little traveling desk that I used to go over our scripts and everything with, with tape and markers and, and scissors and everything else. And it just so happens to be called a just-in-case, so. It would be that. So you could probably fit your duct tape in there and right. then oh, have and your label maker. And then a label maker too, yes. Yes. I love to print out labels, so. <laughs> what about you? Um, mine would be um, a coffee to get me through all the uh, you know rescuing I would have to be doing as said superhero, and um, a bag of snacks uh, when I encounter any toddler. <laughs> 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 That's true. Come from the mom of a uh, almost three year old. So it's our question of the day. If you were an action figure, what would your two accessories be? All right, let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll chuckle at a few of those a little later on in the show. So we are kicking off the show with a salute to our veterans. Yeah, I love this. Soldiers Angels is rounding up Valentine's for military veterans. It's our KSAT Community Spotlight. Check it out. It's a Valentine's Day tradition and making cards for your loved ones and friends to show them just how much you care. But did you know you can also make them for U.S. military veterans? And that card right there on the screen kind of sums it all up. It is our KSAT Community Spotlight for this month. And Amy Palmer, who is president and CEO of Soldiers Angels, is here to help us get started. If there's, I mean, this is something mm -hmm. that just makes you feel good when you hear about it. It does, and you know, it's a great thing for the deployed service members to get the Valentines and also the veterans that are hospitalized over the holiday. So everybody appreciates it and something really easy to do. And you have a few, you know, Valentine's cards for us to make, right? Absolutely, so we've, we've pre-packed some kits for mm -hmm. you all. And so um, you're just gonna glue those items right to the, to the card we have there. Okay. And, and glue the little ribbon down. Okay. And it doesn't have to be anything like this. It could be something from a, a piece of construction paper and a heart cut out by some kids. Great activity for, you know, uh, scout groups, a classroom, something like that, right? Absolutely. So some people bought, buy store-bought cards. Some people make their own. Um, we also have candy bags, as you see here. People can make little candy bags like this with little notes on them. And so anything like that's great. Or even these that have a candy, you know, glued to the inside of the card. Any of those sorts of things are really great. Okay, and so how did this get started? We've actually been doing Valentine's for Veterans for about five years. Um, we started it initially because we used to get so many cards for deployed service members for like Christmas and other holidays and there just wasn't the need anymore with the drawdown in deployments and so we created Valentine's for Veterans to give people another opportunity that wasn't at such a peak season to be able to contribute and do something something little but also something very meaningful. And you it, said, oh go ahead. And you're a veteran yourself? I am. Yes, I was in the Air Force, uh, was medically boarded after an injury, had that back surgery, and so I got out of the military after that. But I've been in working with the military families ever since. Now, when you were in deployed and in, in the hospital, were you, did you receive cards like this? Oh, yes. I was actually, my first assignment was Korea and uh, a remote tour to Korea. So I received cards and letters and care packages. It was awesome. Getting a little card like this, what did it do for you? It's great because, you know, holidays are tough when you're gone and away from family 
family and so um, and especially when you don't expect it you know you expect things for your own family but when you get something like this from a stranger it just really means something special that you didn't expect when you hear your name at mail call okay so if a group gets together or if somebody just individually wants to make up some cards uh, how do they get them to you so they get sent off to the, the troops yeah so they can mail them to us they can also drop them off at our office but all that's on our website at soldiersangels.org there's a whole Valentine's for veterans section where they can get frequently asked questions and more information is there any other way they can help absolutely you know we were virtual before virtual was cool so most of our work with deployed and, and families is all online and by mail and so even during COVID people helped us with all sorts of things baking and sending stuff and writing letters to deployed um, but they can also volunteer at the local VA or donate um, any of those things are available on our website just got to uh, throw out a couple little fun facts mm -hmm. uh, about Amy and she was inducted into the Caring Hall of Fame along with the Dalai Lama right next to that and Very also cool. one of Lifetime TV's most remarkable women and the 2017 Freedom Award winner Thank you very much, and thank you all the, for all you do for our, our troops. Thank you. Thank you. For your service. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. All right. And again, snap that QR code on your screen for more information about Soldiers Angels and their Valentines for, val for Veterans Project. Well, also on the show today, pamper your sweetheart. Yes, just in time for Valentine's Day, we show you a place that is the bomb for pedicures. Valentine's Day coming up, you might be thinking about getting a little pampering. And guess what? You can right here in the heart of downtown. And joining me right now is Andrea Fascinetto, co-owner of Pro Snails Riverwalk. Thanks for having us here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. So tell us a little bit about Pro Snails. So Pro Snails is toxin-free, it's fume-free, and it's vegan. And we also offer nail memberships. So it's kind of like the Netflix of nails where guests can come in and they get unlimited services a month for a flat fee. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. You can get pampered, you know, as every day many as times want. as you want. You can match <laughs> your manicure to your outfit. You can try new trend mixes and nail art and just come in for some good old traditional pampering. And so speaking of the nail art, you guys do some pretty incredible designs, right? That's correct. We have very talented artists here. They do a lot of hand-drawn work. They also do just fun trend mixes. It's basically anything you want, we can do it. And right now, of course, anything with hearts is popular, right? Absolutely, for Valentine's Day, we could do like heart French tips, or we can do little hand-drawn hearts. There's no limit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so head to toe pampering, all right? Yes. So from you know your nails, then of course you can go get a facial, right? Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and you have different kinds of facials. We do. So our esthetician here, she's incredibly talented. We offer anything from express facials to squeeze in during the lunchtime hours, 15-minute um, infrared facials that are fantastic, to full-on cleansing and clarifying, hydrating, and anti-aging facials, which are so incredibly important, especially during the colder winter months. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's a red light therapy. What is that? So the red light therapy is this fun little mask that you put on. It has a 15 minute timer and it's incredibly strong. It has the highest infrared frequency that you can offer um, at a nail salon. And it, it immediately plumps the skin, reduces fine line and aging and any pigmentation. And it doesn't, you don't need to remove your makeup. You don't need to do anything. So you could pop it on, pop it off and go back to work. And I love it. So it does all that and it's really fun to wear because it's kind of like a wrestling match. <laughs> it kind <laughs> of is. It's really fun, you know? <laughs> all right. So in addition to that, also pedicures, right? Yes. And you guys have a really cool bath bomb? We pedicure? do. We do. So we offer a wide um, array of pedicures from, again, super quick to more luxurious. And we have a bunch of add-ons and treats. And one of them is the bath bomb. So we have different flavors or aromas that you get to pick, but we do have our Valentine's Day special. You throw it in and it just turns the water pink and it's so beautiful and fun. All right, and what else have you got for Valentine's Day? Um, we are gonna be having Valentine's Day packages, which makes gift giving so much easier. It will involve some sort of manicure, pedicure, and a beauty bar special. 
All right. And tell folks where you're located and how they can find you. So we're located at the new Frost Tower downtown at 111 West Houston Street, Suite 110. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and you can give us a call. There's a website? We do have a website. It's mypros.com. All right. And for all that information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Happy Valentine's Day. Still ahead, Valentine's themed soap with organically bath and beauty. And up next, Tasty Eats for the big game. Bacon wrap drumettes are heading your way. Well, anything on the grill is always just extra special, especially when you add some really good Tony Sachery's spices and dips and everything else to it, wrap it in some bacon. And here with a wonderful recipe, our dear friend, Gay Sandoz. I haven't hey. seen you in forever. I know. It's so good to see you. I'm so excited to be out and about. I mean, it's so great. And oh, look, it is. And know, this recipe that you have made here, I am just dying to try this. It's a winner, winner. And, uh, you know, it just... Tony's Ashby season is so great, but I paired it with some chili powder Ooh. just to get an extra kick in there. Okay, so we're starting off with, and I see brown sugar on here too and bacon. You can't yeah. go wrong with any of this. I so. gave him a little set. <laughs> Chicken legs, and what's the first step here? Okay, so mix your chili powder with your Tony Sassery seasoning. Mix okay. it together. That's going to be your first layer. So roll first the chicken in that? Layer of flavor, yes sir. Okay. Roll your chicken in that. And when you use the bacon, uh, make sure your bacon is room temperature and it'll wrap better and cook better. Okay. Because you don't have all that fat to cook through. What's the trick to wrapping it? Just make it nice Wrap and it snug. from the top to the bottom. Okay. Because so, you're going to eat this part and obviously you want more bacon. And then put a nifty toothpick in it. And then you can grill these or bake them at 425 for 50 minutes. So but bacon. first of all, dip it in the brown sugar, right? Yes. Ooh. So you always keep me straight here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting rusty. I'm, I'm eyeing that brown, that brown sugar on there. So yeah. we oh roll God. in the brown sugar and then put it aside and make them all when you get ready to put them on the grill, they'll cook the same. Okay. So now, Tony Sachery's, uh, everything that you can think of as far as spices, dips, and now salad dressings and too, salad right? salad dressings, they are in the San Antonio area now. Mm -hmm. So we have this Italian here, ranch style here, and French here, and we're going to use those as dipping sauces today. And you said they've got a little bit of an extra kind of hmm to they them, They got right? a kick to them. Okay. Well, I have got to try one of these. Try things. one of those, and I'm going to be rolling up another one. I'm going right. to roll it in the chili pepper and Tony Sasseries. Now, you said that these could go on the grill or in the oven. About how long on the grill do you think? On the grill, it's 10 minutes sear on each side, and then put them on indirect heat for about 20 minutes. You're going to love that. Oh, wow. You got, <laughs> and it's great, the layers of flavors you got going on here. The sweetness, and then you hit the bacon, you hit the chicken, and then all of a sudden, those nice little spices, not too intense, kind of kick on in there. And the chili just adds an extra layer to that Tony Sassery's great seasoning. And, you know, this is not another great way to, because sometimes it's like, okay, chicken again, chicken again, and another great way to serve it. Also perfect for a party, too. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, you can do it for any kind of event. And, of course, or just at home at dinner time. I bought 10 legs for $5. Wow. So this entire dish for 14 legs is only, what, $8? Wow, that is... $8 for 10 legs or 14 legs or how many, if you can get them on and sale. When you, and when you think about that per person and the, the cost of the meal, that's a fantastic meal. Maybe throw a little salad on the side of this and you're all set. Exactly. Yeah, and, okay. you know, two two legs, 75 cents. That's a deal. How about all the uh, the recipes? The recipes are on www.tonysasseries.com or they will be featured on your, res, your website as well. Excuse me for talking about my mouthful, but the other nice thing about this too is <laughs> it really with the brown sugar on there and the bacon. It's gonna keep the, the chicken a lot more moist too because yeah. that is some of the moistest chicken leg that I've ever eaten. No, I, I just love this recipe, everyone does. And then if you're gonna bake it, 425 degree oven for 50 minutes. Done. Okay, that sounds fantastic. And again, uh, like she was saying, all of these Tony Sacheries, the, the new salad dressing, all the spices, dips, rubs, everything like that can be found in your uh, local grocery store. Yes, local okay. grocery store and on the website. All right, if you'd like more information about all of these products and these great recipes, there is a link on our website. Just go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. As always, so good to see you, Gay. So good to see you, Mike, and thank y'all very much. <laughs> Huh?
Hi, my name is Keila Neighbors from Organically Bath and Beauty, and today I'm so excited we get to make some wonderful Valentine's Day soaps. And so one of the awesome things that we're making, we're making soap that is pH balanced, awesome from all over, um, and great for everyone. So we're gonna start with just showing you how we put everything together. So the first ingredient I'm gonna start with today is our coconut oil here. And so we're gonna measure this out into our pot. We're gonna put everything in here to melt it down. Um, so everything is nice and blended. And so these butters are organic, which is really amazing for our skin, just filtering out any chemicals, harsh ingredients, using only the very best. I'm gonna go ahead and begin to add our sustainable palm oil to the pot as well too. Go ahead and take this off the scale. We're gonna actually melt this down all together. I'm actually going to add some olive oil. Again, I'm going to measure just enough. It's really important to check the temperature so too hot would actually make this soap erupt. And I'm going to add my safety goggles because I'm going to begin to pour the lye into this soap batch here. I always use a filter. So now that I have the lye, the oil is all blended together, I'm just gonna use my uh, rubber spatula to like just blend it all together. So we're about 107, which is perfect. And so to fully activate this batch of soap and get it to where it needs to be, I need to actually use my stick blender to blend it. Okay, so this is a little bit strawberry flavor. I'm gonna add it in. And we thought because of Valentine's Day, what a fun smell to have. Um, mix it up a little bit from our lavenders and things like that. And we're gonna add a little bit of coconut flavor as well too, um, to give it a nice like strawberry creme kind of vibe. So we're gonna go ahead and just begin to mix that all up. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white clay to this to give it a little tinge of color. So a little bit of pink as well too. And I love to use the tea diffusers to sprinkle it in so it's not too much. And this is our mica that we use to color our soaps. And so I'm just gonna pour a little bit into the mold and let that gel just a bit. And so each of the embeds, they're heart shape and they're soap. They're all made of soap. These are shea butter based soaps. So they're really nice and moisturizing. Back to what I was saying earlier about being really great and moisturizing for your skin. I wanna be thoughtful about how I place it inside the mold because that'll be ultimately the way I cut it as well too, the design. So I want it kind of to the side. So instead of straight up, so I'm gonna lay it off to the side just like this. See how it fills it up? I'm happy I didn't fill it all the way up to the top. I'm gonna pour a little bit more soap on top to cover up the embed, and I'll get back to the others. So I have a cake knife here, and so I'm actually just gonna use it to make a design on top. Put a little bit of witch hazel, and this helps to prevent um, the soda ash that we call in soap making, and that little dusting of white like chalk over the top of the soap. And so that leaves it nice and shiny and beautiful. And so that's how you make um, your design for your Valentine's Day soap box. One of the awesome things about taking care of your skin right now, especially during this kind of weather, is that you know you want something that's really moisturizing and something that actually infuses something really beneficial. And so, as opposed to you know something that can be very drying, and a lot of store-bought soaps can be very drying, and so um, you have to apply a lot of moisturizer. So I always say you know to err on the side of caution. Use something that has organic ingredients, also that is very moisturizing for your skin to keep your skin nice and healthy. It's really important. Shopping online, organically, bathbeauty.com. We do do home deliveries, um, and if you do want to come in store and shop, you're welcome to, uh, but we do accommodate you doing home deliveries, which we don't mind, and we love to keep everyone healthy and safe. So please check us out online. And same wonderful recipes that go back generations. Yes, look at that yum yum on the screen. And Cheryl Thompson, the general manager of Mrs. Kitchen, joins us to share one of their hearty dishes and to talk a little bit about their history. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, thank you all. So we're making a couple of things, right? Uh -huh. So what are we starting with? Today we're gonna to be making some fried cabbage and some potato salmon and croquettes. Okay, and a croquette, I always think it's something really fancy, but basically it is just 
a delicious fish patty with okay. some ingredients added to it. Whatever you really like, we can add that to that fish patty to make it an amazing salmon croquette. And this is a great way to stretch food. Of course, too, yes. And maybe it's, use some leftovers too. So how do we get started here? We've got a can of canned salmon all cooked, right? Yes, sir. We're going to be adding our potatoes to that. And we'll that's be, where it's a little bit different because a lot of times people add like flour as the binder, but the potato and yes, it sir. Makes we it have our food. potatoes as a binder and our cornmeal, the yellow cornmeal. Mm -hmm. We okay. have some delicious seasoning for that. And okay. this is the seasoning? Well, yes, it's mostly an onion blend, and we add that to it. Just give it an extra onion cook, as well as some green onions. Okay. And, and he's going to mix all that up? Uh -huh, he's going to mix it all up till it's well incorporated with his eggs. Okay. And to get the, cap the cabbage started? Mm -hmm. What you're going to do mm -hmm. is you're going to add your famous bacon drippings mm -hmm. to fry the cabbage in. We're going to use some delicious bacon drippings to make that cabbage. Now, let's talk about this, because it this isn't easy to find, right? <laughs> That's this a is, secret. This That's is straight ancient. up bacon grease already packaged for you, there ready you to take home. Mm -hmm. Where did you find it? At a store near me. It's called <laughs> H-E-B in Seguin. In Seguin yes. is where you found it. But okay. not in town. Yeah. Not in San Antonio. I haven't been able to find it here. You know, everybody always says it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I think that is better than sliced bread, it's having so bacon amazing. grease like that. It is such a seasoning that we've used for many years. I grew up watching my grandmother, Mrs. Kitchen, use bacon drippings for quite a few items and oh, quite yeah. a few dishes. So that was something that we had on hand all the time. Okay, and that's what we've got, we've got the cabbage going, mm, right? Yes, the cabbage and that just kind of cooks down a bit? Yes, it's going to cook down to whatever texture you like. Okay. And, and, and uh, it's fabulous. That's a good size? Perfect, Mike. I oh, love that. Oh, okay. You're just doing put it very in, well. In the, the hot oil right there? Uh-huh. All right. Put it up. So, so while that's frying, what is soul food to you? Well, soul food to me is something that is very passionate. I'm very passionate about this because everyone has a soul. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we call it soul food, because it's food for your soul, your body and your mind and your heart. And the way to get the soul food perfect is to start with love. Nothing happens without love. At one point or another, you have to incorporate love and that's what makes it so delicious. And I watched my grandmother many years making all kinds of dishes and before she did anything, she put the love on it <laughs> and then she started. So that was something that, we, do, we don't veer away from our training, number one. We have always did it the same way. So when we start out, we start with the love and finish with love. And when people enjoy it, they can taste that love that we put into it. So when, so the recipes, are, is that where most of them come from, your grandmother? My grandmother, my mother, uh -huh. my great-grandmother, my aunts and uncles, which they were my great-aunts and Generation to uncles. generation just passed down. Yes, oh, yes. What's the greatest stuff. tip that you've learned, do you think, that's been passed down? The greatest tip that I learned from my ancestors was when they invited us into the kitchen to learn, the key words was to be quiet and pay attention. Yeah, and, and they didn't say it like, be quiet, they said, shut up. So, <laughs> so that was the sounds best like, advice. Sounds like my mom in our kitchen. <laughs> yes, and, and see, that's how you learn, though. She, she was basically trying to teach me to stop being chatty Kathy and just cook. You know, yeah, so yeah. I got it. Yeah, you know, but also when you talk about the soul and, and all that, because think about when families and folks get together, uh -huh. you always share a meal like that, that's right? right. It's nothing like breaking bread with your family and being able to sit down and eat something delicious and talk about the day or special events that have happened, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So what are some of the more popular items on the menu? Well, I'm going to tell you now, our mac and cheese is number one. Everybody loves a comfort food and uh -huh. there's nothing more delicious than a big bowl of mac and cheese from Mrs. Kitchen and that's something that the people have spoken about. They said that is one of their number one favorites and then we also have some delicious candy yams that's also special all actually all of our dishes are special but our veggies like the collard greens are also special okay and real quickly you have some famous customers right yes I do I've had couple, plenty couple of first players mm -hmm. yes <laughs> oh Right there. There. <laughs> I've had him. He's amazing. He's come to see us quite often. What, what's their favorite on the menu? I think he loves the fried chicken. Oh. That <laughs> famous fried chicken fried is chicken. very good. Oh, and mac and cheese. And oh. mac and mm. cheese and collard right. greens. Well, you were on the east side for nearly 10 years, and you just moved to your new location mm -hmm. there in Windcrest. Okay? Mm, yes, indeed. So that's where you can find. Jen Tobias Trusky mm -hmm. has the dish on the family's love affair with this good food. So take a look.
we have so much to offer as far as Southern Soul dishes and everything that we prepare is started out with love and it's finished with love. Cheryl Thompson and her family are proud to carry on their family's legacy of soul food with recipes passed down generation after generation here at Mrs. Kitchen. And yes, that's a real person, Cheryl's grandmother. It is really her name too. That was her name. She married Mr. Kitchen. Mrs. Kitchen had one daughter, our mother, Mrs. McPherson. And at the end of the day, my mother had six of us. So there's six grandchildren. She has four grandsons and two granddaughters and I'm the second to the oldest. And we walked, uh, grew up watching her make delicious meals for us. And that's what they taught us. When they taught us how to cook, they didn't measure. And they said, just sit down, shut up, and pay attention. <laughs> and I did. It all began with my brother, Garland McPherson. And this was like probably the late 90s. And he goes, sister, I saw you in my dreams. Will you help me open a restaurant? And I looked at him and I go, yeah, boy, but you got to pay attention because they didn't teach me how to measure anything. But nothing happened until 2011. He actually had got it to the point where we would be able to open over on the east side, a nice little cozy little restaurant. Their first Mrs. Kitchen restaurant was only 1,500 square feet. The new location here in Windcrest, over 15,000 square feet. And her brother is known for his soul food as Chef LA. And I believe he tr truly does have a love affair with food. So we're, we're definitely glad that we're being a blessing. So, so we're so he's able to teach others how to make our wonderful recipes because it's all about consistency. We want to make sure that it's right and that's what he stands for. And if you've ever wondered the meaning behind soul food, it stems from the heart, not a cookbook. But the main ingredients is love and that's what we were taught when we were coming up and learning how to cook from our ancestors. Everything they did, they did big and they also started with love and they were very passionate about what they were doing. So I believe that we were blessed with the same gifts that they gave us to be able to cook and make delicious meals just by, you know, tasting and a little here, a little there. There's no measuring. It's just, you know, straight cooking and being passionate because it's from our soul that we're cooking from. Inside Mrs. Kitchen, you'll notice a cafeteria style setup. So you're using your sight and smell as a menu with some of the friendliest staff in town. I went with the smothered pork chops, macaroni, red beans, sausage and rice, a peach cobbler and the cornbread biscuit. Yep. It makes me feel real good because I hear it all day when people are here enjoying themselves and having a good time with their family. I always listen to what it sounds like and I hear a lot of laughter, a lot of joy, a lot of fun. I hear them talking about the recipes and how delicious it is and that makes me very happy. From fried catfish to smothered fried chicken, cornbread, peach cobbler, and all the fixings too, it's more than mouthwatering food. It's memories living on through this menu. The recipes are still here. They can get a taste of what we grew up with, and it's just a beautiful feeling to know that they enjoy it as well and not, and not letting their memory die. Their memory will live on forever because at the end of the day, Mrs. Kitchen's name is famous. For Rese Live, I'm Jen Tobias Chesky. Look at these custom culinary creations for any occasion indeed. But if you still need something, you know, say for this weekend, Butter Late Than Never, Cakes by Felicia can help. Oh, yes, indeed. And it's not just cakes. It's concha, bouquets, turnovers, and more. And Jen got the sweet assignment today. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm so excited. Yeah, I, she's pastry chef, but I like to call her cake artist, Felicia Miranda with Cakes by Felicia, here with us today. And we have some fun creations here, but we're going to get started on a demonstration. What are we doing today, Felicia? Yeah, thanks for having me, Jen. So we have our sweetheart cake here. It's our four-layer cake covered in buttercream. You got the red velvet with vanilla, Ooh. and I have our signature vanilla with our chocolate buttercream. Okay. So we're just going to start piping, and you want to hold it right above about a quarter of an inch away and counterclockwise, and then just start piping it along Ooh. the edge to create the border. And you did some in mind for me. I but, did, but just I'm to speed it up here. Uh -huh. 
I see. That's pretty nice Just here. keep going around clockwise until you get to the other corner there. <laughs> Mine don't look like yours. <laughs> That's but okay. You got started as a self-taught baker, but then you went on to the Culinary Institute of America, right? I did. I started as a self-taught. Um, bought my pan and used all the instructions on the back to uh, create the first cake and started doing it as a hobby and ended up at the Culinary Institute and got my degree in bacon and pastry arts. Nice. In 2017 and I started my own business a year and a half later. Love so that. we're going to start with the ganache drip. You're just okay. going to put it on the edge and let me see here. It might be a little stuck, okay. but you want to just drip it on the edge there. Mine is a little stuck here. You can kind of just push it all around the edge. I hope I'm doing it right, but I'm going to... It's just a drip, so it doesn't, there's no real like uniform to it. Okay. Just now, one thing I noticed stuck. on your website uh, is the cup, pickle cupcake and the big red cupcake that you have. You yeah. have to tell me about that. That sounds really intriguing to me. So we get inspiration in all the events that we do, and we did the uh, Barbara Cohen Big Red Fest, which is how we actually created that cupcake. And the Big Red Cupcake, I use a whole can of soda in the uh, batter. Ooh. And the pickle cupcake is actually a sour cream vanilla cupcake that I use chopped pickles in the uh, batter and also in um, the uh, buttercream. Got it. Okay, yeah, you see them there on the screen now. If you come back out here, I don't know if I'm doing this right, Felicia. <laughs> you know, I, it's the weather too, Jen. Yes. It's really cold out here, so we try to keep the ganache warm, but, you know, the weather's just challenging us today. Well, I am enjoying trying this. Now, we're going to top off with some strawberries. Maybe this will drip eventually. Yeah. Uh, but some of your customer favorites include, it's not just the cakes, right? Right. So we bake everything from scratch. Custom cakes. We do pastries, turnovers, concha. We have our concha bouquet here. Yes. We also do cookies and breads, all kinds of all kinds of goodies. I love it. Okay, so here are my strawberries. And yeah, I really do love the concha bouquet that you have over there too. But I know if anybody has any kind of request, you are there to help with that, right? Because I've seen That's so many right. cool cakes on your website. Yes, absolutely. Cool. So we love to bake your day better with one slice at a time. Uh -huh. So just give us a call for custom orders. You can reach mm -hmm. us at our website, mm -hmm. cakesbyfelicia.com. Um, you can also find us at any of the Cocktails and Cultures events at the Witty. Yes. And, um, right. and there's one on Wednesday next week, yes. uh, I think it's 7 p.m., so tickets are about $35. Um, but also something that you do, which I think is awesome, is you're a sugar angel for the nonprofit, right? Yes, that, Icing Smiles. I'm a sugar angel with Icing Smiles. Which means you... We donate cakes uh, for children that are sick or might be hospitalized. Uh -huh. And maybe sometimes their family members, like their brothers and sisters, because everybody is kind of, right. you know, helping out there. So, so sweet. Yeah, it's, it's great. Just, it's great to see the faces, too, when they pick up the cakes. Yeah, so I can part. imagine. Again, part. we're supporting local when you order from Cakes by Felicia. You can go on our website. We have all the information on SALive.com. Just click the As Seen on SALive tab. Author of Latin Twist and the Tex-Mex Slow Cooker, and she was Southern Living Magazine's Cook of the Year in 2020. Plus, she's also been featured on the Food Network, so we are always happy to get some tips from her. And take a look at her twist on the classic banana pudding. Hello, hi, I'm Vianney Rodriguez from SweetLifeBake.com and today I want to show you the cutest Valentine's Day dessert that is so easy to make. It makes a presentation, guys, it's a stunner and it features one of my favorite pan dulces, the concha. Let me show you what you're going to need for the recipe. I'm going to walk you through how to make it and I'm going to um, show you how to serve this. So for this recipe, you'll need conchas. So I have some pink conchas here that I think are super cute for the Dia del Amor. Then I have bananas. We're gonna need some chocolate pudding. We're gonna need some whipped topping. And then I went ahead and I kept all the little crumbles that come off of our conchas. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those later. So for this dessert, I like to serve it in a glass so you can see the layers. But since it's a, the day of love, we wanna get, you can go ahead and get extra special with these pink little glasses, which would be so cute, these bigger glasses. Or if not, you can serve it in a little bowl. The idea is it's a one little serving that you'll put for your loved one. It's super cute and it's so easy to put together. Okay, so to make this, we're gonna grab some conchas and I have these conchas here. You can tell the little crumbs are falling off. I'm gonna keep those. We're gonna start by dicing our concha into little cubes. The 
because this is a play on the traditional banana pudding, but we're adding conchas to the mix, which I think is super fun. And uh, it's totally Texas, and I love using conchas in all of my desserts. Okay, so I have the conchas. We've just simply ran the knife through them. I'm gonna slice some bananas. And you can do chocolate pudding, you can do vanilla pudding, any pudding flavor that you like. So here I have my bananas sliced. So the concha is gonna take the place of the traditional vanilla wafer or the cookie in our banana pudding, okay? So to assemble, I have my glass. I think, you know what, I think I'm gonna do this cute little pink glass. Okay, so I'm going to add some of my chocolate pudding to the bottom of the glass. We kind of want to spoon it in there so it's nice and even. Then I'm going to come in with my conchas and I'm going to make a little layer of those. So those will soak up in the banana, the pudding. They'll add a little extra layer of texture and flavor. And then I'm going to come in with my bananas. So then we have the creamy, we have the uh, texture of the bread, we have the flavor of the banana, and then I'm gonna top it with some more pudding. And then I'm gonna finish it with some whipped topping. So we're just gonna put a little dollop on there. Look how cute this is. So we have our layer of our pudding, our concha, our banana, and those little crumbs that were left over. I'm going to break them up with my fingers and I'm gonna top my concha banana pudding. So you can see how cute it is and how easy it took me less than a minute to put this together, but how stunning would this be at the table at the end of your Valentine's meal? So simple, simple, simple. We have our chocolate pudding, our conchas, our sliced bananas. We top again with pudding, whipped topping, and then we add those little crumbles of our conchas. So from my house to your house, have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Les, mancho, les mando mucho amor, and I hope you give this a try. Hasta luego. What a fantastic idea. You know, and right, so, and as been, she said, so well, simple. A couple of years mm -hmm. ago, I remember when she was on the show and does the whole uh, slow cooker thing. The Chex Mix in a slow cooker. Mm -hmm. in a Swear to goodness, pot. and it was wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta check out all of her stuff, and if you'd like more information <laughs> on earring. DNA. That was my earring. Just put that earring <laughs> right down there. <laughs> That's one for the I'm show. <laughs> Head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. <laughs>we were talking about Valentine's today. Don't forget, gentlemen, one week from today, the countdown has begun. These are your warnings going on here. Yes, don't say we didn't warn you. That is, of course, our public service announcement. Thanks so much for joining us. We will see you tomorrow at one. Bye-bye.